When Star Wars hit the silver screen for the first time in 1977, it was a major blockbusting success that started a legacy lasting up until today. But why? Apart from the groundbreaking special effects, there is something captivating about the whole story. On one level at least, the audience could relate to the main hero's moral dilemmas and lust for adventure. But on another, deeper level, the movie seemed to reflect some universal truth about our psychology. And that is no coincidence, as George Lucas wrote the script following the renowned Monomyth, a universal template for human mythology throughout ages and cultures. Rather than using the Monomyth, we'll instead be relying loosely on selected concepts from psychoanalysis, in an approach that I will call the Freno myth. And if we want to find out the psychoanalytical meaning of Star Wars A New Hope, or any suitable movie, the best place to start is with the main protagonist. That would be Luke Skywalker. The main protagonist usually represents the core of our awareness, trying to navigate the labyrinth of our inner world. In Freudian terms, the so-called ego, our core self. The other main characters he meets, in other words, the other voices in our head, align with the so-called Freudian trio of ego, superego and id. This pattern describes three primal tendencies within ourselves. It is like the shoulder devil and shoulder angel, and the guy with the shoulders, but scaled to equally sized characters. In non-Freudian terms, simply our emotions, reason and conscience. And there are several Freudian trios that take turns accompanying Luke as the story progresses. The first Freudian trio we find Luke in is formed by his aunt and uncle on his native farm on Tatooine. This is most obvious at the dinner table. Here Luke is constantly reminded of his obligations by his uncle, similar to the demands of the superego. His aunt, on the other hand, is much more understanding of Luke's emotional needs, positioning her on the id-oriented or emotional side of things. But something's wrong. The emotional needs of young Luke are not being met. They are about as subdued as Aunt Beru is being stuck in the role of housewife. His thirst for adventure is as great as the landscape of Tatooine is dry and barren. But all of that is about to change when Luke gets a glimpse of Princess Leia. It may seem like a simple teenage infatuation, but it goes deeper than that. Leia, being of royal blood, is a clearly unattainable love interest for simple country boy Luke, like the pursuit of his dreams of heroism. So the ghostly image of Leia is a projection of Luke's very soul, but which, unfortunately, is out of reach. This pattern is very much like what psychoanalyst Carl Jung described as the anima, a positive part of our soul that is being suppressed because of external demands imposed upon us, but that we retain an eternal longing for and that we need to rediscover in order to become a whole person. Poor Luke is torn between his two guiding stars, on the one hand, there is the discipline and security of his homestead. And on the other hand, the vocation and adventure of the rebellion. But Luke is about to make a choice. Stuck on his dusty world, circling two binary stars, Luke glances at the sunset. One of the stars is going down, while the other is still shining brightly. The setting sun is Owen's star and will soon be gone. The still brightly shining guiding star is Obi-Wan Kenobi's. Obi-Wan, or Ben, Kenobi is in a way an uncle to Luke too. A surrogate or secondary parent and role model. Uncle Owen is keeping Luke down. He criticizes him and buzzes him around, treats him like a child. Obi-Wan, however, empowers Luke and tells him what he needs to hear. He has enormous potential and should follow his calling. 
but Uncle Owen has programmed him well. Such a long way from here. That's your uncle talking. <sighs> Boy, my uncle. Depending on the way we are raised by our parents, role models, or society as a whole, many carry both an Uncle Owen and an Obi-Wan inside ourselves. A voice that breaks us down and keeps us small and obedient, and a voice that builds us up and instills the confidence in us we need for following our dreams. These are thus conflicting ideals within the realm of the superego, or our personal conscience. Set in our psyche, Owen could be said to represent our sense of duty and Obi-Wan our sense of dignity and the confidence and inner strength that we derive from being a good person. In a way, the good cup and bad cup of our minds. This discord is also reflected in the two droids, with the nauseatingly obedient and self-effacing C-3PO on the one hand, and on the other hand the bold and dedicated Artudito, being the very vessel that contains Leia's projection and leads Luke to Obi-Wan. Robots usually symbolize habitual thinking processes that are programmed into us, a process known as conditioning. They may also stand for automated reaction patterns that seem to happen by reflex. So like our programmed tendency for obedience and the automated opposite response to be defiant. Parents will probably recognize that being too authoritarian to children may often lead to even more opposing behavior. A coercive action may sometimes result in an even stronger counter-reaction, although some delay or latency may occur. C-3PO would therefore stand for our programmed obedience on the one hand and R2-D2 for our automatic reaction of defiance on the other. R2-D2 also wasn't Uncle Owen's first choice, but it quickly turned out that sheer duty can be a bad motivator. But our internal reaction of defiance against the suppression of our desires can lead us astray and allow us to go too far. In the end, the desolation of Luke's emotional situation becomes literally overwhelming as it materializes into the inner demons of the sand people who attack him. Even the reptile phases of the sand people seem to reflect the very agony. Often it is so that we need to be pushed to desperation in order to find our inner strength, symbolized here by Obi-Wan Kenobi coming to the rescue. Our personal dignity and self-respect may simply stop us from losing ourselves to our inner turmoils, but at the same time we may learn the importance of rekindling with some of the suppressed sides of ourselves. The subsequent events Luke is faced with are the inevitable consequences of reaching this state of mind. With our newfound confidence that what held us back before becomes meaningless. In fact, it was on the altar of our own desperation that those former blockades were sacrificed. Realizing this enables us to choose a different path, away from humility and fear and towards reaching our full potential. Stay tuned until the second and final part of this analysis where we will uncover the significance of Han Solo, Darth Vader and other